Okay guys, I'm here today with Josh Barter, huge honor for me. And guys, one of the biggest legends in MMA, grappling, and the super nice to be here with you, Josh. And today we're gonna show you one of your favorite moves, right? Yeah, well, uh, people know me a lot for Kezagatame, uh, AKA the head and arm ride. And so we'll give a little preview of what we've been working on here at BJJ Fanatics HQ, which will be released to you guys here shortly. So uh, let's just figure that we've already passed Bernardo's guard, I know, as, as insane as that sounds. <laughs> and he, he, he made the mistake of a lot. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll just say I managed to get to side control. Also would be quite fantastic. <laughs> so I'm in side control and you think, okay, how can I get to that head and arm, that Keizo ride right now? Now one might be that people would think, well, oh, you just let go. And as soon as I give that kind of space, Bernardo is going to be gone. Like, and it, you don't even have to be Bernardo to find that as an exit. Trust me. So to make sure that I don't allow him to just completely escape as soon as I lift this arm, I'm just going to roll my hand and pin with my elbow. That way I'm still shutting down his far side underhook attack and I'm still keeping good position on pinning his upper body and lifting the head because I need to get under this head at some point with this arm. And if his head's on the floor, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Plus, while I'm here, I can also work to maybe put a reverse half in. There's other options. This is basically just a variant on a power half, and I can deliver a lot of pressure onto his neck from this if I want to, as I'm also laying in on his body and trying to take away his conditioning by wearing him out by being on top. So I've got that head up. Now I wanna to get to my case, I got the main. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift my leg and shoot the other one through and then shoot this arm across. The head's up, the space is there. I'm just gonna make them meet. And by doing so, I end up underneath the shoulder, underneath the elbow, and now I'm in a good, nice and strong ride. Three hours between my legs. If we imagine that where Bernardo's head faces, it's always 12 o'clock on a clock. So I want three hours of, of distance, of time between my posts. So now in my case, I got to make. The easiest submission I could think of right off the bat here would be to capture this wrist. I'm sure people have seen this plenty of times before, but even though I probably have 40 pounds, 30 pounds on Bernardo, if I think I'm just gonna grab this dude's arm and put it where I want to, good luck. He's way <laughs> too strong for that, I promise you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin his hand between my leg and use my own body weight to keep it in place. So his arm is mostly straight as it is right now, and I know where the elbow position is. I got a good grip of hand control, and I'm just gonna guide the arm down into position. And now, as you see, we're elongating the arm, we're keeping that, that thumb, that, uh, that joint up. Now that I'm here, I'm just gonna cover with this hand, with this knee, but I'm never gonna let go because I wanna do everything I can to make sure that he isn't able to just rotate himself out of this. When I'm here, I'll slide my bottom leg down just enough to get close enough to his elbow to apply that hold. And then I've got pressure coming up and That's pressure going down. Obviously, a straight arm lock is not a fancy thing. This is white belt to some places, but it's the key, it's the details, it's the application that makes it black belt. Uh, when I get one, maybe I'll, 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 I'll understand. <laughs> so drive that down, let your leg guide it into place. And now I can sit. Also look at how much space I have to keep pushing. If he was more flexible or a girl, perhaps, I'm gonna need that kind of space to be able to drive past the point of flexibility. So it, as I'm pushing down, I'm lifting this leg up. So I've got that pressure coming up and I'm creating that space, that null space to push through. That's amazing, Josh. So your whole thing is to get to this position where you're gonna hold my head and then you're gonna find a way to stretch my arm over there, right? Well, right, and what I'm doing is, A number one is being in the ride. So as I'm riding, if I'm doing it for real, my butt's off the mat yeah, and I'm sitting here and I'm sitting through yeah. you and I'm trying to steal what energy you have, what conditioning you yeah. have. And I know you're going to be, meantime, exactly, yeah. as we're working here, and I know you're going to be fighting to get That's out of this, right. so yeah. I got to ride, and then boom, move that arm down and isolate it in such a way that I have good control. You got it. Because it's going to be hard to control your arm. Even, even done with all this, 
if we were doing this for real, it's still going to be tough for me yeah, to yeah, straighten your yeah, arm. Yeah, but I also start putting weight on my chest. Yes, I get it. And so, I'm not giving up a lot of commitment by attacking this arm, and my ride is still secured, nice and tight. Your head is still elevated, and I can still adjust to whatever you might do. I got it. And then uh, this setup is you know, I love it as well. How you put your elbow on the ground, and I couldn't get the other hook. And then everything started from there, right? Exactly. And so I want to make sure that that far side underhook is is uh, defended against. And I'm also still in a good ride, so I want to transition from ride to ride with as much yeah. tight, controlled pressure as possible, while still keeping yeah. my body weight on my opponent and sapping that energy out of them. Because, you know, if we're in a long match, uh, you competed at heavyweight and some of the other ones. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, super so, or if it's absolute, and I have to wrestle someone who's uh, as good as Bernardo with with all the techniques you use and, and being quick and having excellent guard retention. I'd have to try and find a way to try and steal some of that speed, right. steal some of that energy, right. and keep that person, whoever it may be, from, from reclaiming those guard positions and all that. Right. And at the end of the day, man, if someone's too exhausted yeah, to no, pull I off agree, their I good agree. stuff, yeah, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a good yeah, way to find victory. As soon as they get tired, their jiu-jitsu is gone. Like, yeah, and so no. one way to do it would be to keep them as active as possible, let's say, even you running a really high level guard passing game and just not even fully passing all the way yeah. or getting past, getting points, letting them re-guard and just pass again and just drag them out. Uh, Another way would be to just pound that weight through them, make them carry every ounce on your body, every cheeseburger you ate the other day, like make yeah. them carry all of that and uh, and see if it doesn't fatigue them. No, I got it, no, that's amazing. Yeah, so guys, Josh Instruction is gonna be at bjjfanatics.com. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. Thank you, Josh. Hey, thank you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.